In this video, I'll show you how to configure Audio Swift in Mixer mode inside Logic Pro. The first step is to select the DAW that we are going to work with. Launch Audio Swift before launching Logic Pro. Go to Preferences and then click the Mixer tab. Audio Swift creates three virtual MIDI ports. In Mixer mode, Audio Swift 1 or Port 1 is used for your primary DAW. Audio Swift 2 or Port 2 is for your secondary DAW in case you work with another one like Pro Tools. Audio Swift 3 is only used with the rest of the controller modes. In this case, we are only working with Logic Pro, so we are going to select it as our primary DAW on Port 1. Close the window. The second step is to tell Logic Pro that we want to use Audio Swift as a control surface. Open Logic Pro and go to Control Surfaces, Setup. Click New and then Install. Look down to Maki Designs and select Maki Control Model. Click the Add button and then close this window. With the new control surface selected, under Device, assign the output port to Audio Swift 1 if Logic Pro is going to be your primary DAW. If it is not, select Audio Swift 2 instead. Assign the input port to be the same as the output. Under Color, you can select the color of the control surface bars that will appear under the tracks in the mixer window. Close this window. Go to the main menu again, click Control Surfaces, and then Preferences. Here under the General tab, there are two options we need to check. One is Touching Fader Selects Track needs to be unchecked. This is important if you want to control two faders at the same time. The second one is to make sure Control Surface Follows Track Selection is checked. Close the window. Everything is set up. Now go to Audio Swift and let's open the console window. I'm going to click the start so the window will always be on top. Make sure you are on mixer mode. At the bottom bar, there is a menu where you select the current DAW you want to control. These are the same two DAWs that you set before at the preferences window and you can switch between them. The middle area shows the current view you are working on with the group of parameters you can control with the trackpad. In this case, I'm in the first view and I can control a fader plus the solo, mute and arm record button. To learn the sounds over the trackpad, let's open the trackpad window. In this utility window, we'll see where are our fingers and we can know the size of each sound in our trackpad. With a little practice, moving through the sounds will be easy to you. The left and right areas of the trackpad are for changing between the views and moving from one track to the other by just tapping the trackpad with only one finger. The middle section is where you control the desired parameter and it depends on the view you have chosen. Select the first track in your project. Turn on the console with a four fingers tap. Select view one by tapping the number one. To move the fader of the selected track, use the tip of one finger and slide it up or down inside the fader area. The corresponding fader will move on screen. Notice that the movements are relative, meaning that it doesn't matter if you begin at the bottom of the trackpad or at the top level, the feather will start moving from its last position following your finger direction. Also notice that once you start moving inside the feather zone, you won't need to worry if you accidentally get out of the zone. The selected feather will still move. When you finish, press the escape key or double tap the bottom right corner. It's a good practice to turn off the console right away when you finish using the controller to avoid moving the fader when you really want to move the mouse pointer instead. Let's turn on the console again. If you press the Option key in your keyboard when moving the fader, it will reset to its default value of 0 dB. If you keep pressed the Command key, the fader will move more slowly for fine tuning. You can also change the sensitivity of the fader by going to the Preferences, Mixer tab, and move this slider horizontally. To solo the track, Tap with one finger over the letter S. To mute the track, tap over the M. To arm for record the track, tap over the R. If you need to disable, for example, all the solo buttons on several tracks, keep pressed the Option key and tap the S. This also works with the mute and the arm record button. To control the next track, as you saw here, tap over the left and right triangles. If you need to do a big jump to another track, you have two options. By tapping over the triangles while pressing the control key, it will move 
to the first track of the next eight channels bank. The color bars at the bottom will show where the bank moves. The second option is by turning off the console. Scroll with your trackpad to the desired track and select it. Turn on the console again and start moving the feeder. It is important to mention that in order to control a track that you have selected with a mouse pointer in the mixer window, the track should also appear in the arrangement window. If it isn't, when you click the track, the bank won't move and you won't be able to control the track. Audio Swift will only control a selected track inside the bank. In this case, for example, channels AUX 5 and 6 are not in the arrangement window. If I click over AUX 5, the bank won't move. I will need to move manually the bank from the last track of the arranged window to AUX 5 or create the track for the selected channel strip over the arrangement window. Let's see another views. Turn on the console and tap over view number 2. You now have access to the fader plus the panning. Move up your finger inside the pan zone and the knob will turn to the right. Move down and it will turn to the left. Keep pressing the option key and move the panning. It will go to the center. Now tap over the number 3. View 3 lets you move two tracks at the same time. I tend to use my index and ring fingers for this. Tap over the left and right triangles and it will jump to the next two tracks. Press the option key and the faders will be set at 0 dB. Press the command key for fine tuning. I have shown you the first three basic views in mixer mode. There are three more. View number 4 is for the sense, view 5 for the master fader, and view 6 for the jog wheel. They are all accessible by using a one finger tap over the bottom right area of the trackpad. But before we need to enable them at the preferences window, mixer tap. Here you enable only the views you want to use. I'm going to check them all. Close the window. Turn on the console, tap only once over the bottom right area where the star is, and you select the first view you enabled on the preferences window. Tap again and it will switch to the next one. Remember that if you do a quick double tap in this area, instead of changing the view, you'll turn off the console. Let's select the sense view. The console window will show the number of the send you are controlling on the selected track. Move your finger over this zone to set the level of the send. Press the command key for the fine tuning. Press the option key while moving and the feather will be set to its default volume. Tap over the on and off button and the send will be enabled or disabled. To move to another send, tap over the up and down triangles. Tap over the right and left triangles to go to the next track and set its sense levels. Tap over the bottom right zone again to switch to the master fader view. This lets you control directly the master fader. Press the option key and it will move to 0 dB. Tap one more time the bottom right and you'll change to the jog wheel. With only one finger, start moving in circles around the center of the trackpad. The playhead will move through the timeline. Press one time the S key in your keyboard and the playhead will move more smoothly. You can start moving your finger anywhere inside the middle area of the trackpad as long as the movements are in circles around the center. If you don't lift the finger, you can even go outside the middle area and it's still going to work. It's time to talk about the transport controls. In Audio Swift, there are several keyboard shortcuts that are used for transport control when the console is on and when the console is the key window on screen. You can either use them, or if you prefer, you can use the regular transport shortcuts in your DAW and then turn on the console for controlling the faders, panning, and so on. Like in your DAW, to play the music, use the space bar. Press it again and the playhead will pause. You can change the behavior of the space bar to let the playhead return to its initial position and start playing again by going into the preferences window, mixer tab, and uncheck where it says spacebar works as play pause button. The letters from Q to Y in your keyboard are for the rest of the transport controls. Q is for rewind, keep pressing it and it will go faster. W is the stop button. E is another play button, however this one won't pause like the spacebar does. The R is the record button. T is for enable the cycle mode. And Y is fast forward. If you have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, you will also see the transport controls displayed on it. 
it's good to mention that once you have configured the mixer mode in your DAW, both touch bar and keyboard transport controls are also accessible when you're working on the trigger, scale, and XY controller modes. With Audio Swift, you can automate the faders, panning, sense, solo, and mute buttons. First, select in your DAW an automation mode. I'm going to select Touch. Hit play and start moving a fader. Once you release the finger, the fader will return to its original position. You can even automate two faders at the same time. Faders and sense in touch mode will work this way. Panning, on the other hand, will return to its initial position if you stop moving your finger and even if you haven't released it from the trackpad. Use another automation mode if you want to leave the pan on its new position. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of the videos on how to use AudioSwift in other controller modes. Thanks for watching.